Welcome back to Tuesday Night Bible Study. Tonight, we're going to pick back up. This will be the Pre-Millennial View, Part 10. Tonight, we're actually going to get into these 10 nations or 10 kings that's going to go against Israel. What Bible scholars believe could be during the last, excuse me, the first part of the uh, last part of the Great Tribulation of the last three and a half years. Also, I wanted to make a note tonight that some Bible scholars believe that this could happen in the first part of the uh, first part of the Great, or, or excuse me, the first part of the Tribulation of the first three and a half years. And the reason some Bible scholars believe this could be true is because some Bible scholars believe that the the Israel will actually make a, a seven-year peace treaty with the Antichrist to protect them. So you've got two different beliefs here, but again, that's not biblical, neither one of them. We do know sometime during the tribulation period, there's going to be three wars. We talked about that last Tuesday night. There'll be a Gog Magog war. There'll be a uh, Battle of Armageddon. Then there'll be a final Gog Magog war. We also talked about last Tuesday night where this war is going to take place. And we've learned that it's going to be in God's covenant land in Israel. We learned that uh, Israel will, it'll, there will, the Israel, Israelis, excuse me, will spend seven months cleansing period to bury the dead from this first war. It's going to be a great war. Um, we also talked about who is Gog and who is and, and what is Magog. And we're getting ready to get into that pretty heavy tonight. We talked about the three sons of Noah, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and how Magog, Tubal, and uh, Meshesh, or excuse me, uh, Meshech is one of, or excuse me, these are three of Japheth's sons, and we, we learned about that in the genealogy in Genesis chapter 10. So we also talked about how, and this is just a little review in case anybody that missed this We'll, we'll catch this up to the point of the Ten Kingdoms. Uh, Bible scholars believe that Noah and Japheth migrated to the north beyond the Caspian and Black Sea after the Great Flood. Also, Bible scholars believe that Shem, which is the Shemites, and Ham, the Hamites, traveled and settled south. Some Bible scholars believe that Noah and Jacob settled in an area called Rosh, which is today believed to be modern-day Russia. And we talked about Russia, uh, how uh, Meshesh is Mos Moscow, and Tubal is a Russian city. So tonight we're gonna we're gonna get into this. We're gonna spend quite a bit of time here in Ezekiel chapter thirty-eight. So up to this point, let's get started, and we'll talk about these ten kingdoms. Uh, excuse me, these 10 kings that the Antichrist will actually lead in the first battle against the battle for Jerusalem. Now, Ezekiel chapter 38, if everybody would join me, verse 1, he says here, Ezekiel is a prophet. He says, and the word came to the Lord, or excuse me, of the word of the Lord came to me, saying, son of man, what he, who he's calling Ezekiel, son of man. He said, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog. All right. The prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against them. In other words, how do we know Gog is a man? Well, the Bible here calls him the prince. The prince of what? The prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. Rosh, of course, would be modern-day Russia, and we will I will show you how I get that here shortly. Uh, Bible scholars today believe Meshech is modern-day uh, Moscow, and Tubal would be a city, a Russian city called Tublisk. So 
this right here, and what right here is where we're going. As far as Gog Magog, as far as Russia, he says right here, verse four, I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws and I will bring you out and all your army horses and horsemen and all of them splendidly attired a great company with buckler and shield, all of them wielding swords. Now let's break this down a little bit. He says, I will turn you about and put hooks in your jaws. When you catch a fish, if anybody's on here that's listening that fishes, when you hook a fish, you reel that fish to where you want that fish. You bring that fish to you. If you are the one catching the fish and you've hooked it, you bring that fish to you. All right. So, God is going to lead the leader of Russia. Now, I'm not saying Putin is God. I'm saying that when this time happens, whoever the uh, president of Russia is will be considered God. Now, if this was going to happen tomorrow, yes, Putin would be God. But we really don't know when this time's coming. We know it will happen after the church raptures. So whoever is a leader, again, let me point this out and stress this, whoever is the leader of Russia, when this time comes, will be Gog. All right. And his kingdom is called Magog, which is the land of Russia. Now, he says, I'll bring you out. He says, I'm going to bring you out with all your army, your horses, and your horsemen. All of them splendidly attired, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them wielding swords. So what's he mean here? Well, all these kingdoms, these 10 kingdoms that's going to come against Israel during this Gog Magog war are coming with, they're coming with a mighty army with all their heavy equipment. It says right here, horses and horsemen. Back then when this was written, when an army went out with all of its horses and horsemen splendidly attired, buckler and shield, they had their buckler, they had their shields, they had, and all of them wielding swords. When they carried all this equipment with them, they were going to battle. Well, today's army, you've got to put that into today's terms. Today's army would be a great company with buckler and shield, all of them welding swords and all of them bringing their equipment, all of their war machines will be coming into Israel. All right, so let's go on. Now, we've, we've we figured out who uh, Russia, we figured out that it is Russia, Gog. Now let's jump over to Ezekiel 39. I wanna point something out. It goes into a little bit more detail how we get Russia as Rosh, okay? Ezekiel chapter 39, verses one, through, and one and two. Let's look at them, okay? Now, Ezekiel tells us here, he says, A new son of man prophesy against Gog and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. Right here it is. He says, and I will turn you around, drive you on, take you up from the remotest parts of the north and bring you against the mountains of Israel. All right. This is how we know he's talking about Gog as the leader of Russia and Magog as being the land of Russia because God considers Israel... Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, being the center of the earth. If you laid a, if you laid a, uh, a compass down in the city, center of, of uh, the city of Jerusalem, it, it's going to, when it points directly north. If you look at it on a map, don't take my word for it. Find Israel. Look at it on a map. It's going to point. Uh, point to the remotest part of the north. That's Russia. There's nothing above Russia but 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 ocean. Okay, so 
when he says here he's going to take you from the remotest parts of the north, there's nothing more remote it's directly above Israel, Jerusalem, than Russia. Then it becomes a sea above it. So that is the farthest land north of Jerusalem. So we have to take that as it being Russia. Now, he says, I will, I will bring you in with a great army. Now, let's see who these, these countries are here with him. Let's go back to Ezekiel 38, and we'll pick back up at verse 5. Now, he, t he tells us in 4 how he's going to have this great army coming against the land of Israel. All right, verse 5 tells us here. Persia. All right. Persia today is modern-day Iran. All right. Ethiopia, which the King James Version calls Cush, which is actually Ethiopian, which is modern-day Sudan, okay? And Put. Put today is Libya. It is, is, it, put in Libya is in Africa, okay? All right. Then he goes on to say here, Persia, Ethiopia, and put with them, and all of them with shield and helmet. In other words, these are going to battle with the king of the north, which is, at this time, Russia, the leader of Russia. All right, he's letting us know these are joining in with him. He says right here, Gomer, with all its troops. Gomer, guys, is modern-day Germany and Ukraine where Russia's in right now, okay? He says right here, Russia, or excuse me, Gomer with all its troops, Beth Darkama, Darkama, is, Beth Darkama would be Asia Minor and Turkey, okay? And he says right here, and I'm bringing you from the remote parts of the north, with all its troops, he says right here, many peoples with you. In other words, these are the kingdoms that's going to go against Israel in those days. Now, also, Bible scholars believe that it's going to also be all your Muslim nations that surround Israel. Now, let's look at the Scythian nations. And guys, I'll miss these names all to pieces. But there's seven Scythian nations are what they call stand nations. These are Muslim nations. You've got Kurd Kurdistan, uh, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. I tried my best to pronounce them the best I could. These are also nations that Bible scholars believe will join in in this great battle because these are all Muslim nations. Again, there's seven Scythian nations or Stan nations. These are the nations that will join in. Yes, there's more than 10, but at this point right here in uh, Ezekiel, God gives us 10, okay, and these nations. So these nations are actually gonna go up against Israel. All right, now, Let's go on and read this out, and then we'll break this down. Bible scholars believe that Ethiopia was founded by Cush, Ham's eldest son. Now, again, Bible scholars believe Put, which is Libya, was and is considered Africa, was founded by Put, Ham's third son. Gomer was the first son of Japheth and grandson of Noah which founded Germany and Ukraine. You can find all these genealogies in Genesis chapter 10, the whole chapter. But if you look at Genesis chapter 10, let's go ahead and go there. Genesis chapter 10. Let's look at verses one and two, okay? Now these are the records of the generations of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The sons of Noah 
The sons were born to them after the flood. This is the history, the generations or descendants of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right. These are the sons that was born to them after the flood. Now, verse, if you want to go down through here, you can read them, but we'll go ahead and do a couple of verses. The son of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomer was Ashkens, Repath, and Torgama. You can break these down through here and see where these lineages fall. And again, you got to understand, these guys, Bible scholars believe they migrated. And after the flood, it's believed that Noah and Japheth went far north up in Russia and settled. Uh, it's believed that Ham and Shem went south, which would be down around Iran, places down in there like that. So these sons actually went and settled there. So this is where these old names are coming from, folks. Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 38. All right. Let's go on. He says in verse 7, Be prepared. And prepare yourself, you and all your companies that are assembled about you, and be on guard with them. In other words, you be ready because God says, when I bring you into my land, I'm going to show you that I'm God. Now, if you want to look a little bit more of history, the house of Torgarma, it was established by Gomer's third son, Noah's great-grandson through Japheth. Now, these nations are all the ones that will be involved in this first Gog Magog wars. When? Verse 8. After many days you will be summoned. In the latter years you will come into a land that is restored from the sword. Now, let's talk about this. There's some prophecy right here in these scriptures. First of all, right here's where Bible scholars believe it's the second half of the Great Tribulation for the last three and a half years. Because he's, right here it says, after many days you are summed in the latter years. They translate that as the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. Now, he says right here, you will come into a land that is restored from the sword, whose inhabitants have been gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel. Now, let's, let's talk about that a minute. Restored from the sword until 1948, when Israel became a nation again, it was trodden down by the Gentiles. Israel has been, the Jewish people has been in control of, the, of, of Israel, the state of Israel, since 1948. All right? In other words, it was restored from the sword in 1948. Okay. Now, he says, whose inhabitants have been gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel. Since 1948, since Israel became a nation, they have been Jewish men, women, and children returning to their homelands. Right now, if you turn the TV on and you pay attention and you watch, right now, and I'm going to use John Hagee as an example, his ministry right now is boarding, Ukrainian Jews and flying them in to their homeland right now. God is gathering his children, folks, for this event that's coming. That's prophecy right now that we can actually sit there and watch being fulfilled on TV. He says right here, those inhabitants who have been gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, they're coming home to Israel. Listen, which had been a continual waste until 1948. But its people were brought out from the nations and they are living securely, all of them. Right now, they're living very securely in Israel. 
Now, he tells us right here, he says, you will go up, you will come like a storm, you will be like a cloud covering the land. He says, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. And these nations that I just spoke about, these will be the nations that is going to go up against Israel in this battle. He says right here, thus says the Lord God, it will come about on that day that thoughts will come into your mind. He's talking about this leader of Gog, who is Gog, that thoughts will come into your mind and you will devise an evil plan. He says right here, and you will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. In other words, they're living securely. I will go against those who are at rest and live securely, all of them living without walls and having no bars or gates. He says, you're going to go in to capture spoil and to seize plunder, to turn your hand against waste places which are now inhabited. And against, here we go again. Here's prophecy, same thing. Against the people who are gathered from the nations, who have acquitted cattle and goods, who live in the center of of the world. Again, God calls Israel. He calls Jerusalem the center of the world, folks. He bases everything on this nation of Israel. And he goes on down here and he tells them, he says, you will come in. He said, let's go to verse 15 here. He says, you will come from your place out of the remotest parts of the north. He tells us again, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great assembly and a mighty army. And you will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It shall come in the last days that I will bring you against my land so the nations may know me when I am sanctified through you before their eyes, O God. Verse 17, he says, Thus says the Lord God, You are the one of whom I spoke in former days through my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for many years that I will bring you against them. He says right here, It will come about on that day when God comes against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God, that my fury will mount up in my anger. He says, in my zeal and in my blazing wrath, I declare that on that day there will, there will surely be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. Now, let's go on down here to verse 21. And he says right here, now this is how they're going to be defeated in this first war. This is how God's going to defeat them. He says, I will call for a sword against him on my mountains declares the Lord God. In other words, every man's sword will be against his brother. What does he mean by that? I know you've heard of friendly fire. He's going to confuse them. When he confuses them, they're going to turn on each other. They're going to kill each other. Now, if that's not enough to destroy the armies, he says right here, verse 22, with pestilence and with blood, I will enter into judgment with them. What is pestilence? Natural disasters, earthquakes. He can just open the earth up and swallow them if he wants to. And with blood that I will enter into judgment with him and I will rain on them and their troops and on the many peoples who are with them a territorial rain with hailstones, fire, and brimstone. He's going to stone them, folks. He's going to stone them. He says, I will magnify myself, sanctify myself, and make myself known in the sight of many nations, and you will know that I am the Lord. So he's telling us right here what's coming in this battle. These armies are going to go up against him, and he is going to fight for his people. This war right here will be won by God. And he's going to show them, he's going to, he'll send some back. He'll send some back so they'll know that he is the God of Israel. And then, folks, we've still got, after this 
study tonight, we still have um, two more wars. Well, we still got, we got to talk about the world monetary system. We've got some good stuff coming up here that we're going to talk on here next Tuesday night. We're going to talk about a cashless society that's coming, how we've got some of this cashless society already in place. We're going to get into that. We're going to look at uh, we're going to look at several more things. Prophecy that's going to be fulfilled. Then we're going to get into the Battle of Armageddon. Then we'll get into the Second Advent of Christ, which is a return. That is when Christ will return with the Church at the Second Advent. Then we will learn what happens to Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. We'll learn what happens. There'll be a judgment which is called the Great White Throne Judgment. We will talk about that. We'll talk about the, that's of course is a judgment of the lost. We'll talk about a new heaven and a new earth. And then of course we will finalize this study with the description of the new holy city, Jerusalem. So I, I'm gonna try my best to do two more parts and get this done. Again, I hope this is helping anybody that's trying to study prophecy. I know the study of prophecy, I love it, I enjoy it, and it is one of my favorite topics to study in the Bible. We will pick back up and we will start back, like I said, with the uh, worldwide monetary system coming up, and we'll pick back up next Tuesday night with that. Um, if God's landing on your heart tonight, I want to I want to do an invitation uh, for you to accept Him as your personal as your personal Savior and Lord tonight. Also, if you've been going to church, you got out of church, folks. Right now is the time to get back in. We're we're living on borrowed time right now. Uh, you can see these. You can see these prophecies being fulfilled. The Bible is being fulfilled right in front of us, folks, as we speak. And again, I would like to actually open it up tonight for an invitation for someone that God's been dealing with your heart and you want to be saved. Um, if you backslid, then right now is a perfect time to come back to the Lord. There's Three things you must do, folks, to become saved. First thing you have to do, of course, is admit your sin, forsake your sin, and ask God to forgive you. Secondly, you've got to believe in Jesus Christ, who he says he was. He died on a cross. He rose again the third day. He was born of a virgin birth, and he was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And you have to make that commitment to him. And what I mean by that is you have to live that commitment. You Sunday can't be the only day you serve. You must serve him seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And Paul, again, he tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, how we can be saved. He tells us here that if you confess with your mouth the Lord is Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's a promise that he's made to us. And he says, For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. So tonight, I'm getting ready to say a prayer. If you would join in with me, if you want to be saved, then say the, this prayer with me. If you've turned your back on the Lord and Say the prayer with me, folks. And like I said, he will restore you. Father God, Lord, thank you tonight for your Bible lesson. Thank you, Lord, for opening our hearts and our minds, Lord, as we study your word, Lord. Teach and tell others about you, Lord, and carry your word out, Lord, so others will learn about you. Father God, tonight, I pray, Father God, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that doesn't know you, I pray tonight, Father God, First of all, Lord, that they will ask you into their heart, Lord, and you will save them, Lord, and you will they will start a new life with you. 
It's very simple to do. Lord, all, all they have to do, Father God, is say this prayer and you will save them. Lord Jesus, I've sinned. Father God, tonight I ask you to come into my heart. Lord, I forsake my sin and I ask you to come into my heart and save me, Lord. Father God, that I can live for you. Father God, that I believe that you are the son of Jesus, of, of God. You are Jesus Christ. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again the third day victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And Lord, tonight I ask you to come into my heart. And Lord, I ask you to save me. This and all things, Lord, I ask in Jesus, your son's precious name. And thank you, Lord, tonight for accepting me into your family. Amen. Folks, if you said that prayer, God has saved you. My advice tonight is to find you a church. Get in church. Let's get busy for the Lord. If you would like to comment tonight, if you would like to send me a personal message and tell me that you got saved, that's wonderful. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I would like for you, if you would, next Sunday night, to, or excuse me, Tuesday night, invite someone to join in with us and we'll pick back up on some really good prophecy that's getting ready to come into play. And again, we've still got two more wars to go over. Uh, everyone, thank you tonight. I, I pray that you would like and save so God's word gets out. And again, thank you tonight for joining in. And may you have a blessed Tuesday evening. Thank you. Good night.